introduction. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Jerusalem. It's great to be uh, here with you again. This year, uh, Malcolm is going to listen to my speech even. Last time he was locked outside when he uh, escorted the uh, Bobby yeah, to his car. Uh, so, as I said, good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you again. Friends, we are, we are at a critical moment in uh, Israel's history. This is a time of great change, a time which presents both strategic challenges and new opportunities. This is a critical moment for three reasons. One, the nature of the threats facing us is changing. Lone wolf terrorists inspired by radical Islamist incitement have murdered hundreds throughout America, Europe, and the Middle East. Two, we are in the middle of a transition to a new American administration that couldn't be more different than the previous one. And I know that you understand it even much better than I. We have a president and administration who are very, very supportive of Israel. But we need to proceed with great care and work in close coordination with the administration in order to prevent Israel's enemies from driving a wedge between us. And lastly, we are at a critical point in the fight against delegitimization and BDS. 2016 was a successful year in the fight against BDS. The BDS campaign used unprecedented language to describe 2016. They called it painful. However, the BDS activists are regrouping. They are building new coalitions and will try to take advantage of 2017, the year of anniversaries, to delegitimize Israel. For the, for the past year and a half, Israel has been facing a wave of lone wolf terror. This is a new form of terror, which isn't directed by traditional terrorist groups with clear leaders. Instead, it's spread by one of the most powerful and dynamic forces in our world today, social media. These terror attacks are inspired by radical Islamist incitement spread directly to the smartphones of young Palestinians, Palestinians, encouraging them to stab Jews, run them over with cars, or set fire to Jewish towns, if the weather conditions are right. They know they cannot harm Israel militarily, so they strike at what they think is Israel's soft underbelly, the home front. As Israel Minister of Public Security, I've been in charge of protecting Israel's citizens from this wave of terror. We've had to make many changes to the way we operate. And one of the most important steps that we took was increasing our ability to monitor social media and identify, and identify potential terrorists using uh, our cyber capabilities. Thanks God, we have been successful in greatly reducing the number of terror attacks and casualties. We are certainly not complacent. Israel's police and security forces are working day and night to stop attacks and reach terrorists wherever they hide. But we're moving, as you see, in the right direction. Not a week goes by without a minister or member of parliament from another country reaching out to me to learn from our experience. It seems that most of the world has finally learned the ideology behind this terror is the same everywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's in Brussels, Paris, Nice, Orlando, San Bernardino, or Jerusalem. And just last week, I met with the Austrian Interior Minister and with parliamentarians from the UK. And I'm telling it as only one example. The first issue they wanted to discuss with me was fighting terror and learning from Israel's experience. The Austrian minister even told me that he now sees increasing cooperation with Israel 
not less than vital to his country's security. And as I said, this is only one example. Democracies around the world must strengthen their cooperation in fighting lone wolf terror and online incitement, which knows, as you know, no boundaries. And that is why I am working to convene this year in Israel an international conference of democratic leaders from around the world, ministers of home front, uh, of uh, public security, uh, ministers of public security, ministers of, <coughs> uh, from many other uh, responsibilities to devise common solutions to these challenges of terror and incitement. This is an effort that Israel and the United States must lead together. Our strategic alliance must grow even stronger as we adapt to face the new threats facing our citizens. The new, the new administration presents many opportunities to strengthen this alliance. Israel and America must work together to ensure that the Iranian nuclear deal is fully enforced, if not cancelled, and that Iran is held accountable for its violence, violations of international norms, Security Council decisions, and support for terror. It's simply immoral to accept Iran as a legitimate state just because it has slowed down, for now, its nuclear program while it promotes terror throughout the world. Today, we have an opportunity to demand an end to the, dis to the discrimination against Israel in international institutions. And we have an opportunity to create, together, <clears throat> together with the administration, the conditions for serious peace negotiations by changing the basic approach of the international community. Because, as you know, until today, the Palestinians had every reason to believe that time was on their side. They could refuse to negotiate, incite terror, and attack Israel in the international arena, while the world put pressure only on Israel. This approach has failed. The Palestinians must understand that time is working against them. We must convince the administration to change the equation. The Palestinians must see that incitement and unilateral steps will get them nowhere and that their interest is to sit down to the direct negotiations as soon as possible. Con continued rejectionism will come at a price. I believe that peace is possible. Every time Israel had a real partner for peace, we were willing to take far-reaching steps. If we have a true partner for peace, and we have to check that we have a true partner, we can make a deal, as some like to say. You probably know who I'm talking about. These are the opportunities, but friends, there are also challenges which we cannot ignore. These include the increasing polarization in America. We will certainly not take sides, trust me, we have enough politics here, but we must preserve one of Israel's greatest strategic assets, our bipartisan support. I know that many members of the Jewish community, and especially young Jews, voted Democrat in the last elections. Already, the leaders of the BDS campaign are trying to drive a wedge between Israel and young Jews, and the young generation in America in general. Given this challenge, we must take several steps. The first is to ensure that we engage the populations that traditionally vote Democrat, including progressives and minorities. We must bring them to Israel and expose them to the realities of Israeli society, which too often are ignored by the media. I'm not going to tweet now against the media, but that is the truth. 
Israel has much to share on issues high on the agenda of these communities. For example, on the issue of multicultural policing, which I'm in charge of, I'm investing together with the Israeli police hundreds of millions in integrating Israel's minorities into the police force and in building trust between the police and Israel's Arab communities. Just yesterday, listen to that, to this, Channel 10 published an amazing poll. 72% of Israel's Arab population now trusts the police, the Israeli police, yeah? We can share our experience with minority communities working to build trust with local police. And I think that uh, even the police in America uh, can uh, learn from these numbers. The second step is to ensure that Israel is a welcoming place for all Jews. Israel must be a place where Jews of every stripe and color feel comfortable at our holy sites. We need to address the sensitive issues regarding religion and state through respectful dialogue and creative solutions. The compromise regarding the Kotel and the Ezrat Israel prayer area is an excellent example of this approach, and I hope that it will be implemented. And thirdly, it might be good if we Israeli lawmakers were a little bit more cautious in terms of our legislative initiatives. And we took into account the way things look in the international arena. I'm not saying that this should be the only consideration, of course, but it should be one of them. Friends, we are at the outset of 2017, 100 years since the Balfour Declaration and 50 years since the Six Days War and the reunification of Jerusalem. 2016 was a tough year for the, for the BDS campaign. Congress and many states passed anti-BDS legislation. BDS bank accounts were shut down in five European countries. And more and more world leaders, universities, and artists denounced calls to boycott Israel. In fact, this summer, and I'm very happy to see it, Israel is going to host one major artist after another, and I think that there are no more tickets even. I know that the Conference of Presidents and many of the people in this room were instrumental in making 2016 a bad year for BDS. So in the name of the State of Israel, let me say thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you. As Minister of Strategic Affairs, I've been leading Israel's most serious effort ever to combat delegitimization and BDS. We have taken many actions with numerous successes. Trust me, as a politician, I would love, you love, you love what I'm going to say, uh, Malcolm. I would love to stand here and tell you about all the actions we've taken. But I know, like you, that what's needed is not big conferences or announcements, as I've learned just recently, but quiet, effective, and hard-hitting action. I can tell you this. 2017 is not going to be any more fun for BDS. And that is also thanks to our cooperation. Friends, at this critical moment in time, the bonds between Israel and the world Jewish community are more important than ever. In order to meet the challenges and take advantage of the opportunities of the new era, we must be willing to adapt and think outside the box. If we work together, I'm confident that we can succeed. We can ensure that 100 years after the Balfour Declaration, Israel's legitimacy and safety is secured and the bonds between Israel and world Jewry become stronger than ever. Thank you very much. And have a fruitful conference. Thank you.